Hello, my marvellous sausages. Now, you know, over the past few months, well, I love to cover indie games, you know, smaller games that are coming out that I find really interesting. Well, uh, a few weeks ago, um, the company called Camland Games and Pasta Space Interactive are making a game called Underspace, and they offered me a game keep. So uh, the game isn't due for uh, an early access release until the 10th of April, but I've been playing with it uh, for a few weeks now, and I've been really enjoying it. And then they reached out, uh, so they're sponsoring this video, my first of its kind, so I'm absolutely delighted to be doing it, uh, and they wanted me to cover some of the gameplay features of Underspace. So I thought, well, here we go then, I'm going to jump straight in and tell you exactly what's going on. Now, Underspace, if I were to give it a genre label, yeah, sorry about that, I would describe it as a sort of, well, an action RPG trading sandbox space fighter sim. You start off by being thrown into the galaxy as a star chaser, and this is just hours after losing your fortune as a result of a very strange shipping accident. Mm, yes. But luckily, an old chum of yours has got a rust bucket of a starfighter that you can use to get back on your space feet, as it were. So, your adventure begins. You fly a ship into the unknown, trading, bounty huntering, yes, uh, playing through single player campaigns, which look to have an incredibly interesting story. But tied up with all of this, there's something else thrown into the mix. Uh, and it's uh, there's a major like HP Lovecraft vibe going on. And when I say vibe, I mean huge tentacled monstrosities lurking in nebulas, just waiting to loom out of the miasma and make you soil your spacesuit. As I said, I've been playing the early access version of the game, and it's going to be available on Steam from the 10th of April. We don't have an exact date on when it'll come out of early access and go into full release, but this early access version does have loads of content. It's got the single player main campaign, and there's over 40 quests as well, all bosses, all all points of interest, all factions, star systems, random missions, they're great, storm hazards, marvellous equipment, flyable ships, and loads more. It's actually one hell of an achievement, really, because if you read the dev diaries on Steam, which I do, and they're highly entertaining and informative, and I really recommend you do, because it's great to follow along with the game's development. It really makes you feel part of it. You understand, then, that it's a very small team working on a game that's got, like, a huge ambition, and it's huge in scope, too. And it's one of the reasons why this is something I'm going to keep on playing and keep on following along to. There's a lot of game to be played here, so I wanted to show you as much as I could about the game so we'll have a look at ships we'll have a look at systems on the space stations how we get missions flying into combat we'll have a look at some tentacled monstrosities in space all of it really so we'll have a good old look over the next 30 minutes so you have an idea of exactly what under space is all about now instead of starting from, well, the start, we're a couple of hours in about, uh, to the game, really. This is a new save that I've done. And I just wanted to show you an example of one of the missions. Now, the missions you can pick up from various locations. This one I picked up from a bar, which is nice. Yes, the bar, which was uh, here, look, on uh, uh, Zalhay's Mining Depot here. So uh, we're in Guria, or Guria, which is... Uh, one of the uh, star systems now talking about systems you can see along the top there i've got shortcuts to various different things if i press on y there we can go in and we can see our ship which is very very nice indeed i've kept the same ship that we've had from the off because i haven't i bought new weapons and things which you can see sort of listed in here we've got lots of different weapons ports Let's go to the weapons separately there, so you can see them all listed there. I don't have any heavy equipment at the moment. In, in fact, I accidentally sold something heavy earlier on, just to have a bit of cash. Uh, I haven't got any AI stuff there. You've got ammunition, so I've got chaff. I've got seeker missiles there. But you can change all of these systems out. My hardware, so I've got a large thruster. Ooh, uh, I've got that stuck on there. I haven't bought a mine layer yet or a cloaking field, but I've got some extra hull plating and uh, old shield systems and things. Uh, internals, these are things like uh, basically repairing your hull and your shields. So you've got a shield cache there and a hull webbing cache there. They uh, repair your shields and then of course your hull. But these are finite. You see I've bought 13 of these from the uh, space station that we were just visiting. So I can use those by pressing G on the keyboard or holding down G on the keyboard. Uh, one is one is for uh, shields and one is for the uh, uh, hull webbing as well. I had a friend drive here. Now this is really interesting but like a complete 
complete arse, I've inadvertently sold it. But no matter, because a friend drive basically summons a friend ship to you for the duration of a particular mission, from what I can tell. Uh, but uh, that's something that uh, I haven't used as yet. So you can see there's various other things here. I've bought a high scanner. Uh, upgrade of my scanner, so I got a greater range of my scanner. Then you've got special cargoes, which are things that you would just pick up as you're flying along. Or broken components, I can repair some of these perhaps. Or a cargo, I've got unstable refabricator. These were some uh, of a mission's uh, rewards that I haven't really used yet. And then i got a cargo hold too, uh, which can hold, well, cargo. Yeah, so you can see how much space I've used all together as well. There's also a crafting menu here, so you can actually craft different things. I don't actually have that much I can craft at the moment. I can craft some chaff. Look there, let's try to do that. I need uh, the unstable uh, refabricator and wreck chaff so I can craft the item. Bang, and there we are. I've lost that. Oh no, but never mind. I've done that there. Uh, we've got internals here, shield caches, things like that. So these are all craftables. Right, something's going on because while I'm here, <laughs> something's happening. Uh, I don't know what it was. Maybe we're being attacked. I don't know. But anyway, here we are. So what we've got to do, I've got a mission that I'm going to do here for you. Now, I've tried this a couple of times and failed it miserably. So let me show you what it is. I can go to O up here directly on the keyboard or you can just click on it. I'm doing one called Gone Adrift. So the foreman of the Zalahees Mining Depot was tasked with locating mining ships that went adrift and were lost during a recent storm. My long range scanner has been modified to detect them. They'll show up as purple pings on my radar. So that's the one that we're going to have a little go at here. Here is the maps by the way. Now this is incredibly important. We've got our local map here which shows you all the different locations. Someone's having kick-ins you can hear it in the background. But not only that, we've also got a galaxy map as well. And there's loads and loads of different areas there. But I, while they are, what's going on? Now we're going to get out of here. We're off. Because there's lots of action happening. I love the way you can see the gun ports pointing to where I'm going. Uh, yeah, so this mission we've got, we'll just go through this uh, a little bit. We're looking for purple pings. Now, I hold down B on the keyboard. If I just tap B, that's like a tractor beam, and that sucks in any doodads that are around me, any goodies. If I hold down B, you get a ping like that, and you can see the purple. That's telling me uh, where I need to go for this particular mission. So I can uh, charge up my engines. You can just got normal thrust, but you can do a double tap and do uh, like a high-speed engine there. You've also got something called an abyss drive. Which is totally excellent, which is like a long distance thing. I love the names of it, of uh, the stuff in this game. It's great. So, we're going to go and head to this ping here. And let's see what's going on. So, we just get forward there. Can I activate my abyss drive yet? Double tap to do it. I'm too close to a, a station or a jump point. You can't do it near any large objects. Uh, now, the, the controls for me... I'm using mouse and keyboard. I don't use mouse and keyboard hardly ever at all, but I've been using it for this. And now oh, it's taken me back to my PC days back in the early 2000s, playing Freelancer and Free Space 2 and all those kind of things. Oh, I loved it. Anyway, so here we go. We're approaching our first uh, thing. You can keep on pinging. It doesn't really cost anything. And see the purple ping there is giving me a rough idea. You can see there's other pings in the area. They're uh, referring to different things. So uh, you've got like a green ping, which is, I think it's a ship. And uh, you've got uh, like a red ping, which is enemies. And then you've got like the white ping, which is a points of interest. And a gold ping, which are really points of interest. So for this mission, I've just got to get close up and I'm going to do my scan. And hopefully, there we are. And you can see here, we've got like voice holder uh, stuff as well. Hang on, let's just sl slow her down. So we don't go crashing into anything. So that's the first one done. So next we need to go and find the next one. So we'll uh, punch that there. And I think we've got one here. Look, so let's let's go let's double tap for our high engines. They're really cool because they look like symbols. There's mystical symbols involved because there's definitely uh, the HP Lovecraft feeling to it. Uh, and... Uh, the underspace, I believe the title refers to, is the space between spaces, where all the weird stuff... Because if you look in the middle of that nebula there, there looks like some kind of creature in the middle. I haven't investigated that yet, uh, but I will I will do. Whoa! And this is why this game is brilliant. So there we go, we're on our way here now. I can actually use my mouse control there look so the ship levels off allowing me to click on various different bits and bobs this panel down here 
but that'll do me long range scan straight off as a depressing B. And then it'll show you uh, different things. That targets my closest enemy. I can go to the nearest target or the thing that I've targeted. I can dock with the target or I can just enter free flight mode. And then you can, on here, you can uh, dictate what you see in your list. So, any ships? So we've got everything at the moment, important stuff. But if there's any ships in the area, if there's any planets, dockables and large objects, wreckage and treasure, very useful, cargo items, and then basically everything. So we're just making our way along here now to the thing. We can't see it. There we go, Asteroid Miner. It'll give you a rough idea of where we're going. We should be able to kick in the Abyss Drive now, because I'm just using my high engine drive at the moment. So double tap. There we go, the Abyss Drive is charging. And then you get a lovely thingy here. And away to go, which will close the distance a lot quicker. You can see as well on the other side here, I've got my weapon. So I've got Sunbeam A, Sunbeam A, we've got a web beater there as well. I've got a launcher, which I really have not <laughs> bought any missiles for. I've only got two missiles left in that as well. I've got two of the web beaters too, and I've got some chaff as well. I just hit seven, and the chaff will come out. But it doesn't happen when you're in this kind of mode. You're in the abyss drive mode. So let's just get a little bit closer here now. And then we'll shut the engines down, and then we'll go and scan it and give it a bit of investigation. Now, one of the main traversal uh, mechanics, apart from the ship, of course, you can see these rings here. They're like uh, highway uh, turbo lanes. So you get into the first one, you can see there, look, you go on the bottom one, it'll tell you where its destination is, and you'll go really quickly whoosh, to the next point in the system. You've also got uh, stuff which is um, takes you to other bigger systems as well. Uh, I suppose you call them jump gates, they're major jump gates. So uh, they'll take you to different planetary systems too. So we're going to get close to this miner here and we'll uh, scan this baby. It's a very interesting aesthetic though as well with the lightning and stuff. Scan it. Bang, there we go. Slow down. I don't know these things managed to get all the way out here. It's a conversation point here. Look, didn't you anchor them? Uh, metaspatial anchors only work on much larger ships. Think cruiser and above. Usually if these are moored, they're fine. Obviously these aren't. Yes. Good. So that's the second one done. Let's find another boink. Anything pop up? No. Oh, there is one down there. So, <clears throat> let's go there. There you are. You can see everything in the locale. Look. So, uh, Zalahis, Planiguria, the mining depot. Now, in the red there, you can see for a moment there we had the washers. They're one of the factions who it gets. So, there we go. Let's see if we can scan this so we're not too... A bit too far away yet. Let's keep on going. Come on, high engines. Charge up. Now, the category one that you can see flashing in the top right hand corner there is the storm that's in the area. And I'll talk to you about storms uh, a little bit later on. There we are, that's another one found. You didn't see any crew on board, did you? There were a few people doing some fix up when it blew away. I didn't see anyone. That's not good. Be alert. So it looks like we've got other measures for this. Now, let's have a little look. We've got one more due, and I'm sure. It's in the nebula there. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. You can just see it there. So, we're going to make our way there. So, we charge up our high engines first. And then, once they're getting going, you can double tap uh, your throttle up button again. And that engages the abyss drive. You can, of course, change it to whatever you want. But uh, I find it best to keep the main controls here. Off we go. Boom. Nice. I like the look of the lighthouses on the rocks, and you can see all the other ships in the space lanes there. It's all very nice. It's very good. Yes. Anything uh, in the in the uh, in the vicinity? No, that's just the mining depot. Let's see if we can get any closer here. Can't click on that baby yet. So yes, uh, and then you can see I was talking about these here. We've got the hull webbing, which repairs your hull, and then we've got this here as well, which is your shield cache, which repairs your shields. My ship's so small at the moment that I'm only holding 13 of each. And then here we got this missiles currently equipped. Ooh, right. We've gone into the nebula. We are now entering the Mutara, the Rituria Nebula. Now then in this, we're going to find... Hang on, let me hold it down and keep on doing the wrong ping. There we are, we're still on track here. <sighs> Love that lighting when it bangs up. Ooh, there we are, you just threw a big tentacle there, man. Oh my god. <laughs> right, yes. But we're ignoring the testicles now and we're looking for uh, our final ship. Which is interesting. Locate all missing adrift mining ships. So this is the last one. Should have done that. Have we gone too far? Oh, we've gone too far. Let's 
Now then, just going to put my hands up here and say that I completely got lost in this nebula and I ended up <laughs> leaving the nebula and going to one I'd already visited before. So instead of putting you through that entire painful journey, see there's the one, I've locked back onto the wrong one. So I went all the way out to that one and then I flew all the way back in. So we're going to cap now to be coming back in, otherwise that's five minutes of your life you'll never get back again. There we are, good. So we're getting in closer to it now, <clears throat> so we're going to lock on. I think we're a bit far out for a, for a scan yet. So we didn't get smashed by these massive tentacles. It's terrifying. Okay. Oh my god, they're so close. Right, let's get in there now to this ship. Give it a scan and get the hell out of here. Is that going to come between us? I don't know. Ooh. Okay, now we're close. Let's try this. There we go. Let's slow down a minute. Pilot, what's up? What's up? All right, okay. Uh, I think I found all four drift miners. Four? Yeah, four. I don't know how to tell you this, but we only lost three mining ships. Oh, no! Oh, what the spag? Oh, a large ship has turned up. I simply... I'm far too weedy for it. What have I got to do? Now, I'm going to interject here again because this battle took ages and ages to do because I'm currently still kind of learning the battle tactics when you're fighting things and there's a lead spot that you can see it's that red dot on the screen there that I need to be firing at because you can see all oh, most of my shots look are just flying off to the side uh, and not impacting the target at all and I've had a massive kick in there because well I just got in too close Plus, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've completely forgot to stock up on missiles as well. And considering this is the uh, base ship that you start with, this is quite a difficult strap. Strap? <laughs> Scrap. But in my defense, I did get them down pretty low. Uh, and also, uh, I wasn't really keeping track of their health until I realized you could click on the reticle, which gave you a readout of the health bar so you knew how much you were giving a kick in. Because you can see I'm way too far out here. So, uh, as I fought on, of course, the inevitable happened. Oh, you shit! So, what I've decided to do uh, after that horrendous death is come and show you around the space station. We're going to go and have another go at the mission there, but I'll cut to the fight at the end instead of going through all the scanning again. But I wanted to show you these space stations. Now, they all kind of look different, uh, but they've all got similar kinds of areas. So, you can see here we've got our ship uh, just docked up there. Uh, but down here, we've got two guys who can help us out. First of all, you can see we've got this fellow here who's a cargo type person. You can trade in, you can buy your scrap metal. We've got conductors of V scrap metal and orium there if you want to sell stuff on i've got 43 grand at the moment hello eager moltari and over here then we've got somebody who will sell us systems for our ship so we're the equipment dealer so we can come in here and we can have a little look and swap things out which might actually be a good idea for me to do so what have i got here uh, i'm gonna start changing over some of my I've got a seeker launcher there and I'm gonna, I don't like these web beaters very much. So I'm going to sell, I'm gonna sell that. I don't like either of those and sell that as well. Then we're gonna look over here at the equipment dealer to see what we can stick in as replacements. So what have we got here? Well, I would, I, I don't mind uh, those. Uh, I've got a launcher, maybe another launcher perhaps. I've got an academic launcher there. What's that like? Maximum ammo 10, hull damage 4,500, shield damage. Uh, let's try there. Ooh, a seeker launcher, perhaps, or a rapid fire launcher. I don't know. They're all about the same. Uh, let's go with two seeker launchers, I think. So I can go like that, and I can buy that cargo, and it'll automatically then go into the slot. So the last thing I need to do, I think I'm going to buy another uh, beam weapon of some description. So we've got a sunbeam seed, 16,000 on that one. We're going to D for 21,000. Let's buy that as well. Look, okay. There we are, because uh, we've got a class four, class eight. Perhaps, maybe I can sell these off a little bit and put a, put either a class B or a class C in there. So I sell that. That goes up to 25. So I can still stick, stick in. Uh, what have I got there? Class A's I've got there, you see? Let's have a little look. So that gives off hull damage and shield damage 18. Hull damage 25 and shield damage 14. This one is hull damage 70 and shield damage 36. Sounds nice. Uh, but maybe we need something for... No, we'll just go for hull damage, I think. Can I afford another one of those? Yes, go on. No open hard ports. Bum. Strange. It's class 3 hard ports. So I can only put a class 3 in. Which is that one. Which is probably for the best. 
So you can see the hard ports there would uh, give me bits and bobs. Ammunition wise, so it shows you now what you can buy. Yeah, so I can buy chaff, which is those there. I can't, can I buy any more of those? Uh, not enough space for me chaff. That's annoying. Oh, because I'm full. Seeker missiles, I can hold 18, so we'll buy them. And we'll buy all of them. That's good. Uh, what's the other things as well we've got? We've got the academic missile launcher as well. Uh, so we need to buy some of them, do we? Let's have a little look. Ammunition. Let's buy some academics. And we'll buy a huge wadge of them as well. There we are. Good. So I've got 28 missiles now in total, which is nice. Hardware-wise, anything I want to stick in here that I can upgrade? I've only got 8 grand. Uh, that's only 260 grand. That's ass. Uh, but it's just pointless me buying anything else at the moment because I just don't have the cash. And then we've got internal units as well. So I've got my hull webbing there and i got a scanner unit there. Uh, so really, I want to look for buying that concentrated webbing. Look, I could put that on software setting that changes the fabrication techniques of hull webbing on your ship. So that's interesting there. So we've bought a few bits and bobs there and I think we're fully tooled up. But if you have a little look uh, at the top there, we are in the docking area at the moment. You can see F2 shows there. If I press F3, we're going to go straight to the pub. And in the pub, you've got the breaking news board, which gives you interesting news about various things that are happening in the area. And might give you a, a good idea of where to perhaps go next. And then in the next window, we've got the job board here. And you can click on the various jobs to see how difficult it is and how much reward you're going to get. So it's a very useful source of money. There's your jobs. There's your news. Uh, then back at the top there, then, we've got various other things. We go to Z from here, look, which shows you the available missions. So you don't have to walk to the board. You've got a shortcut to it as well, which is very, very friendly. Uh, and then we go to F4 here as well and see if there's anything else. There's nothing much else we can do here. Now, you can see there's two other icons at the bottom there uh, with the Z key shortcut and the C key shortcut. The Z key uh, is just... Uh, looking at your ship and uh, tootling it out again and the C key is repairing your ship restocking it and all that kind of a thing so there we are that's grand that's what we've got I'm now going to attempt this quest again and you can join me when that blathering ship appears again so good luck to me yes I'm just gonna launch space to Z there we go and uh, we're gonna pop out and start again join me in a moment there's also a uh, hull view here. You can cycle through some different views. Looks, so there's a reverse view there. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, like a side view there, uh, and the rear view too. Ah, oh, bloody hell! Uh, but you've got the, uh, the the view here from the cockpit, which actually makes it a lot easier to see your thrust power, look, your energy, and your shield and your hull integrity. Because sometimes it can be quite tricky to see what's going on there when you go to your uh, free flight view. So yes, that's pretty cool. I might stick with that just to see what happens. So we'll locate the last miner. Let's scan it and let's get the git to come in. Yeah, four. But we only lost three. Dun, dun, dun. Git alert. Bloody hell. Now then, I'm going, I'm using this cockpit view here. Let's uh, target this git. Cockpit view is quite uh, close quarters, shall we say. I'm going to pull back out so I can see what's going on. Oh, it looks nice from those, doesn't it? Okay. Let's uh, try hitting some rockets. Nice. Did we hit that baby? Ooh! They work quite well, eh? Did that help? Boom. Not too bad. Oh, I've gone into space hyper jump mode, which I can't shoot in. You can only shoot in this kind of mode. That's it. Come on, get into it. I'm using them all. Everything. In we go. That's better. How are we doing? Right, we're out of everything. But we're still... Doing the kick-ins. Move. Health. And there's my hull repaired as well. You've got to hold it for you. Oh my god, I lost my shield already. So we can get in. Give it a bit of a kick in. Please don't die again. 
Yes! That's it! Shoosh! I think it was a storm white. I managed to kill it. You killed a whole storm white? Yes. And I'm sure there's uh, voice acting and, and stuff as well to come. So yes, well I can't say that I'm not impressed. Come on back, wheel something or other. Let's check if we got anything in the area. No, we haven't. But there's our waypoint. That was great. That was great. I killed it. Yes, good. So you can see, I went in completely ill-prepared just now. But now I've just had a few missiles. Let's bugger off back to the base to see what goodies we've got. Yes, that was pretty cool. Didn't have anything there, though, unfortunately, in regards to uh, stuff. Now, this mission uh, I found is a main quest mission, not a side mission. So, you find these. Uh, if you go to O, oh, look, we've got two t different types. We've got missions, which are the ones you pick up in bars and the like. And then you've got these are quests, rather. This one's gone adrift. I got this one called Hostile Delivery. But we're just going to go and finish this one off. Oh, my God, I'm all over the shop. Don't forget when you... <laughs> When you go into your menus to have a little look around, if you want to lock lock your kind of trajectory, press the space bar, and then you can move your mouse independently and it sort of orients you where you go. And you can as well look, go to the target, so we can actually autopilot into it there, which is very, very useful if you want to go into your maps and have a little bit of a look around. Uh, but of course, you don't want to do that in case you get smashed in fish. Hey, you know what? Before we go there, right, let's save this. <laughs> Let's save this look here. Uh, override save. No, uh, let's enter a file name. Sausage! Uh, and override the save with that. Okay, yeah, whatever. Right, I'm going to go and have a look at that big, horrible looking thing in there. Where was it? There! What is that? I'm going to go and have a little look, right? Just going to traverse in here and see what it is. Can't help it, I'll be dying to. That's what I like about this game. It's full of intrigue and mystery. I'm going to charge my abyss driver getting close. It's right in the heart of the nebula here. I'm probably going to die. But that's why I saved it. Oh, that is there, look! It's a huge squiddly diddly thing. Oh, no! I can use a huge... There's a huge heartbeat. Slow down. Let's find it. There. This is scary. Whoa! And this is why this game is brilliant. Because you don't get this kind of thing. <laughs> it's a nice pace to... I can't scan it, can I? It's like a huge heart. What the hell is it? Is that a mouth? Look, there's like jellyfish around you. It's like a heart in the middle of the nebula. I don't think that's going to do much, is it? Can I scan it? No. Jesus, how weird is that? like the heartbeat. Oh, I've hit it. Quick, now I'm doing the sidestepping here. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Ooh! It's such a weird thing. I'm hitting it all the time, and the jellyfish are around it as well. So there we go. That was incredibly interesting for me. And now I'm going to bugger off back to my waypoint because nothing seemed to happen. So I just want to show you completing the mission. I returned to the space station where I was given the mission initially by a fellow who was standing in the bar area rather than from the bar job board. He actually gave a quest mission there. Uh, and he gave me some goodies, but unfortunately he didn't give me any cash, which was quite annoying and stingy. Now, storms, these babies here, they're pretty important because you get storm eyes from them, which are kind of like a currency that you can use to buy bigger weapons and better ships. Well, I'm in the Voldrick system here, and we do have a, currently have a storm. 
uh, which you can see on the map. And I've flown into the nebula because the storms are always in the nebulas that you can see there. Sorry, let me go back to my local map just to show you. Look, so you can see there's a nebula and the big storm cloud there. So I've flown into that, into the heart of it. And what happens then is you go into what's called the underspatial rift, which is what I'm in here. Then you want to grab that from your list there, like the underspatial rift, and then you want to target it and go in and you want to start shooting that baby up to get yourself the uh, the storm eyes. So let's see what happens. We're going to go in here. Let's let's uh, stick in me high engines. And let's do an underspatial rift battle. Now, I'm sure there's going to be bigger monsters and stuff. Uh, as we go through the game, you can see these huge tentacles here. But we should have uh, a monster protecting this. Now, this is only a light storm as well. You can have hyper storms, which are far more dangerous and spread quite a bit. So you want to go into each system where you can find the storm and see if you can quell it. Ooh, here we go. Let's see what's happening now. We're going to keep on following this baby. Hopefully, we'll get some form of thing here. Because this is, I know, I've only played this a few times. I've only played, this is only my second storm, really. Oh, you can hear it building up like crazy, can't you? Here we go. It's all going a bit weird. We're getting closer to the center of the lift. Look, oh, there we are. There it is. We just have to shoot that. I'm too far away. I still keep going. Let's get closer. We're gonna get in closer. Here we go. Charge was in. Oh, up we go. Bang! Blew it up. Look, and it was that simple. There was no creature protecting it, which is quite lucky. So we grab that, and then we just go boom, and hopefully, I got a storm eye. I got two storm eyes. Look, which are these things that we can spend then at the stations. So that was a light storm. Didn't seem to have any beasties protecting it, or not that I noticed. But uh, they're well worth having a look at because you can see here in the uh, map there, if you've got a galaxy map, there's ones with different intensities as well. So it's very, very intriguing. Yes, why the hell am I? Now, the game does cite Freelancer as one of its major influences. I haven't played that game for years, but it really does ring a strong nostalgia bell in my head because it's a different game game by its very nature it's i mean it's hectic in battle of course but you can play it at your own pace and there's lots of different elements that you can do to make your gameplay experience completely different for example i didn't even touch on the trading aspect of it yet and of course there's loads of elements that are going to be introduced into the game like voice acting and stuff like that so we're just going to be keeping an eye on this as it's something that really does interest me let me know in the comments if it's something that interests you as well because I'm considering uh, doing a bit of a live stream on this as well at some point. Now, as I said, the game is released by Camlan Games and by Pasta Space Interactive. And it's going to be on Steam in early access from the 10th of April. So if this is a tickle your nostalgia freelancer um, itch, then uh, go and check it out. Because it is a lot of fun to play and it's definitely something I'm going to be keeping my eye on as it progresses. I shall leave links in the description below. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall speak to you all again very soon. Sausage. Hurt.